I'm Robin Higgins, and this is hydrophobic versus hydrophilic in chemistry. All right, so in its most basic sense, hydrophobic means water, hydro, and phobic, what are you scared of? What are you a phobe of? Scared. Basically, things that are hydrophobic hate water. Hydrophilic means the opposite. So still water, but loving. You can do scared or hating. All right, so let's look over a couple of examples. Well, if you ever put oil into water or anything water-based, like if you tried to make an oil and vinegar salad dressing, you notice they probably separated into two layers. And so you'd have your water down here, that's heavier, and your oil up here. All right, so why did that happen? Well, let's look at what the oil's composed of. The oil can be thought of as a greasy chain. And we say greasy because oils and just other things like that, like grease, get along. Uh, they're both hydrophobic, so they both will combine with each other. And so if you have a bunch of these molecules, what happens is they line themselves up. And then they have interactions in between them. Some of these interactions are called London dispersion. And there's lots of other names of intermolecular forces as well. Um, and so this is how uh, hydrophobic things interact. Now let's look at something hydrophilic. And we can actually look at water for this case, even though water is what we're talking about. So now water is composed of oxygen and hydrogen. And oxygen is electronegative, which means it's partially negative. And hydrogen is partial positive. What this means is that if you had an electron density map on top of this molecule, all of the electron cloud, almost all of it, would be all around the oxygen, and this little hydrogen would have almost nothing. That's really different than these chains. These hydrophobic molecules are made of carbon and hydrogen, and carbon and hydrogen share equally. And so its electron map would just look like this, like everyone was just best friends. So what happens if you have a bunch of these, these water molecules will also line up. So you can imagine that a negatively charged oxygen or partial negatively charged would be attracted to this partial positive and they form hydrogen bonds. And this happens all over. And so this is actually a lot stronger bonding than this. So kind of think about it if you had a bunch of magnets and you could line them all up in the correct way so they're attracted to each other, they'd be really strongly bonded. And then if you had a bunch of pieces of plastic that were the same size of magnets but not magnetized, these wouldn't be stuck together. And if it had an option, all the magnets would cling together and all the pieces of plastic would just be by themselves also. So this is basically how we get to hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Anything that has a strong dipole that has something electronegative, something electropositive, is going to be hydrophilic, and it's going to go into water. Anything that doesn't have that dipole that's just sharing electrons evenly or not chemistry magnetized is going to be weakly bonded, and it's going to be oil, or oily, or it will get along with oil. So a good way to remember this is like dissolves like. pretty much describes what we've been talking about. I'm Robin Higgins, and this is Hydrophobic versus Hydrophilic. Mm -hmm.